I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad and so blessed having, this, having been given this opportunity to bring God's truth to you. And I just want to bless every one of you, you know, thank you for your, for your feedback, for your testimonies you send in. Thank you for uh, liking or subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you haven't done so yet, please do so. Praise God. And, and, and put on your notification. So when the message drops, you will be among the first to know. Praise God. And, and all, all the time you spend listening to this broadcast, thank you for our partners. Thank you for those who take our time to pray for us. And thank you for those who obey the Lord concerning us. Some of you give of your substance, you know, that this message will continue to go out. Thank you. Listen, the Lord will never forget you. He will never forget you. you. You you make ministry a lot easy. See, why do I say that? Very important that you understand this. Why do I say that? Because we trust in the Lord in all things that we do. And you are over there praying for us and receiving instructions from the Lord consigning us. And while we're over here trusting the Lord and obeying Him, and He commands you to give financially to us. And then you give without anybody calling you, without anybody saying we need, you, you just give. And, and your giving takes care of the things that we need money to take care of over here. So that's why I said, listen, God, for your obedience, will never forget you. And you will never lose your reward in the name of the Lord Jesus. The same way you didn't wait for anyone to urge you to give. So also the things that you need in your life, before you speak of them, the answer will show up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just bless you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in that attitude of faith, can we make demands for today's daily bread? Say this with me, say, Father, because I've prayed for you already, so now you receive it. Father, I demand and I receive today's daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And Father, we just bless you today. Thank you for your anointing that is available to touch our lives. And everyone under the sound of my voice right now, everyone watching this broadcast right now, I speak healing to their bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I will share with you yesterday what Jesus, the instruction Jesus gave to us. Now, we're talking about the, how... how the saints are being perfected and we're doing the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? See, Jesus gave a command. So I was explaining to you what he meant by teaching, the, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and on, of the Holy Ghost. And then yesterday, I remember telling you, using Isaiah's prophecy as an example to explain what it means by baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, Isaiah prophesied by the Spirit of God. Jesus came and did his part from what Isaiah prophesied. But you also have a part to play. You also have a part to fulfill in Isaiah's prophecy. What part do we have to fulfill? The R, O, U, R part. He was wounded for our transgression. So, if he was wounded, remember when Isaiah prophesied this, Jesus wasn't born yet. 
But Isaiah was prophesying as though it had already happened. But he was speaking of the future. So Jesus came to show that Isaiah was right and he was hearing from the Lord. Now that's what the father did. The father put it in the heart of Isaiah and he declared it by faith. And Jesus came, being led of the Holy Spirit, fulfilled what Isaiah said. And guess what? He fulfilled it willingly. He wasn't forced to fulfill it. Now that's why you need to understand the heart of the Father and then you need to understand the heart of the Son, Jesus. Jesus wasn't forced to die for us. No, he understood what it meant and he understood the risk that was involved. Yet he chose to do it because he also loved you. Praise God. The Father loved you and Jesus also loved you. You know, Jesus said it in John chapter 16. He says, on that day, you will ask in my name and I will say not to you that I will pray the Father for you because the Father himself loves you. So listen, the Father, you know, sometimes we, we think the Father loves us because of Jesus. No, no, no. The Father already loved us. And because of his love for us, he sent Jesus. Understand this. Because the father loved me, he needed to do something for my salvation. So he sent Jesus to die. So it was the father's heart to save you. I'm talking about the one who formed the whole universe. It was in his mind to save you. And Jesus came and willingly obeyed the Father because the Father needed someone who would obey him even to the point of death. And Jesus willingly. Don't ever think Jesus was a remote control. The Father was just after all. The Father conceived, you know, brought forth, he brought him forth, put him, him in the womb of, of, of Mary, brought him forth, raised him up. Yeah, but you see, Jesus still made choices. It was his will to die for us. So when you understand the mind of the Father, you understand the mind of the Son, Jesus, then you come also to understand the mind of the Holy Spirit. So all these things that the Father had in his mind, all these things that Jesus had done, you were not there. So how is it real to you? By the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit begins to guide us into all truth. That's what Jesus said. He says, look, when he comes, he will teach you. He will guide you into all truth. So today, the person that we relate with the most is not the Father. It's not the Son, but it's the Holy Spirit. Or even though the Holy Spirit, like Jesus said, doesn't speak of himself. He takes from the Father. He takes from the Son. And then he brings to us, meaning when the Holy Spirit begins to guide into all truth, you will realize following him that you are fulfilling the words of Jesus. You are fulfilling the words the Father have spoken before. See? That's what it means, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Make them to know. So, he said here, yeah, teaching them, Matthew 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. And lo, I am with you all, even always, even to the end of the world. Teach them to observe everything I have commanded you. I remember last week I was telling, last week Friday I was telling you, just like so you get into, you got a job into this office and then you realize everyone is corrupt in that place. What would you do? There is a way out. And I'm not talking about playing the selfish game. I will not join people. No, you are not just there to play an exemption role. You are there to save everyone that is there. I say, but they will not listen to me. No, have you tried? Sometimes we just need to apply intelligence in our communication of the truth. And people will get it. 
Just a little intelligence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when you do the work of the ministry, you will eventually realize that your life has become an edification to the body of Christ. How? You see, there is no one who will do the work of the ministry that will not have testimonies following him. Those testimonies are for edification. You, we use those testimonies to strengthen the brethren. Praise God. So when, when he says, for the perfecting of the sense, for, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity, thank you, Holy Spirit, of the faith. Now, do you know what that means? Now, remember, first of all, a perfecting is taking place where the Holy Spirit is working in every one of us. And, and we are doing the work of the ministry, right? And then we are edifying the body of Christ. Then he says, till. How do you think that's going to happen? A season. Now, because the Holy Spirit is working in me, the Holy Spirit is working in you, we are both obeying and yielding to him and doing the work of the ministry. He, we are going to realize also that, hey, we've been saying the same thing. We've been saying the same thing. It says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Who's going to teach us that knowledge? It's not a man. No man will be given this full revelation to teach. Only the Holy Spirit will teach. And guess what? He teaches you what you need to know. He teaches me what I need to know. But when we meet and we begin to compare notes of what he has taught us, we then realize that we are saying the same thing, but from different angles, based on our experience and understanding. Those things influence your revelation. Yeah. Your background, what you have experienced in life, will surely affect the revelation you receive from the Lord. He says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise God. Now, he said that till we come, meaning all these things he is doing, perfecting the saints, has a limit. What limit says till we come to that place? What place is he talking about? Unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So we need to, now he says till we come to the knowledge. He's talking about the fullness of the knowledge of the Son of God. That's when you know Jesus for exactly who he is. He is. Many people think they know Jesus today, but they don't know him. They only know about him. But then he's saying we need to come to that full knowledge of Jesus. Where your heart is settled because you have known him. Then he says, Unto a perfect man. Can you see that? Now, because when we know him, when we come to the fullness of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what that means? Every knowledge we get of him, we become. So it says, when he says, till we all come to the fullness, to that knowledge of the Son of God. And he now says, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Till we get there. Where we see Jesus for who he is. And the moment we see him for who he is, a transformation has already taken place in us. Thank you, Lord. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, but at the slight of men and cunning craftiness of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. We are not going to get lost because we are grounded in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do you, 
Do you get it? But before then, he says something is taking place. We are being perfected. We are, we are growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how the perfection takes place. The perfection is not about how much you walk in church, how many things you do in church. No, it's your increase in the knowledge of the personality of Jesus. And my time is up. Praise God. I pray for you today that the Spirit of God will take you indeed and begin to cause the fullness of God's knowledge and the knowledge of the Son of God to flood your heart with His light. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best day ever.